rough night in Clawville. What now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. One bizarre case to solve. What a pleasant surprise. The looks the cop was in person. <sighs> Never heard that one before. You here for a good old fashioned beating? A dame to die for. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what does she really want? Lawrence? Let loose your animal instincts. After you, boss bird. Because tonight, you'll have to go wild. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. The legendary chicken police is back together. It's an amazing news. Say, partner, are you chicken enough? Hello guys, welcome back. We are here today uh, again with uh, Chicken Police right now. Mm -hmm. um, you've already seen the trailer. Um, you know, no need really to introduce ourselves again. I'm Konsti, I'm with Anna today. Hello. Uh, you've seen us before if you've been around the Indie Arena booth and we are joined right now by the developers of the game Chicken Police Painted Red, the Wild Gentleman. Let's Head on over, head on over to them, and guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, I am Van, the writer and the director of uh, Chicken Police from The White Gentleman. And hi everyone, I'm Tomasz, I'm the producer of uh, Chicken Police. Hi, I'm Peter, I'm the leader of Chicken Police. Yeah, so we made this uh, super weird and normal adventure game. That's that's cool. Um, how? Well, first of all, how did the Wild Gentleman sort of come into existence? Your you know your studio. How did you guys meet? What's the story behind all all of you? Uh, actually, the Wild Gentleman is uh, born because of Chicken Police. So that was our first uh, uh, project together, and uh, we gathered our team to make this game especially. So. Uh, everyone in the team is very uh, experienced in the, in the uh, game industry, uh, but together as a, as a new team, new uh, development team, this is our first team. So, yeah, basically the right gentleman won because of Chicken Park. Okay, awesome. And the game itself, uh, you know, I've, I've seen some some concept artwork uh, going from all the way back from you know pixel art styles to what we've seen in the trailer right now. Um, what happened? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> How did that happen? It's a question we, we get a lot. So, so yeah, the first first idea was a very traditional pixel art adventure game, but uh, we thought that that's not weird enough for us, that's not uh, strange enough for this project uh, especially, so uh, we tried some uh, traditional 2D uh, drawn uh, graphics, but also uh, didn't, didn't really resonate with us uh, quite well, so, uh, and then I just uh, cut a, a rooster's head and placed it to my, to my, my body, uh, and, and it was super strange and weird and odd, but uh, not the best kind of way. And, and we, we were just like, voila, that's, that's what we need. So, yeah, it, it, was, it was very strange in the, uh, the first, first glance, but uh, uh, soon as Tomash uh, saw the, the first uh, uh, pictures I did, I uh, not the graphic artist, so it was horrible. Uh, but soon as he succeeded, fell in love with, I think, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of felt the same. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> yeah. when I saw the game. You know, when when Jan came to me and uh, told me that hey, there's this new game coming. You know, that we're gonna publish and it's called Chicken Police. Man. <laughs> okay. That's, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> we're open-minded, so sure. And then I saw the game and it was like, it's. Uh, I said this yesterday, I think, it's, um, I mean, it's at its core a very serious game, 
you know, a very serious yeah. story. And <clears throat> it's, it's, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go as far as to say the game is ironic, because it's not. Uh, but it is, it has a certain sense of humor to it. With, yeah. you know, with the animal people and that, that sort of stuff. It's, it's, it's cool. It's, I, I really like it, personally. It's very unique. The first time I saw it, I, I, I just thought it was hilarious. I need to play this game more because it's exactly my kind of humor. It's just this, this yeah. silly, nonsensical combination. It's just... Yeah, and then as, as soon as you... Yeah, and you, you kind of go into it and you think, oh, this, you know, this is kind of silly, but it's funny, yeah. so I'll give it a go. And then, but you realize that it... Or rather, the, that sense of... of weirdness kind of it just goes away as you play the game and as you get to know the characters you don't see them as these weird animal human hybrids anymore they're actual characters like it really works it's yeah. crazy it's super yeah, that, that was the, one of the core concepts of the game uh, was this this strange contrast between between the uh, the animals and then the silks you were talking but i don't know uh, the other aspect is, is the very witty dark noir tone uh, we have in the game. And the story itself is a very nature uh, mm -hmm. story. But yeah, uh, the humor is, is, is also a very, very uh, important uh, part of the game because it has its uh, very own absurd, uh, cynical. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to put it in words, but uh, yeah, the humor and uh, in contrast, is that with this story is, is the main main core concept uh, behind behind the, the world of Chicken Police, which is a its own world. So it's not America or Europe. It's, it has its own world uh, called the Violence. And, um, and yeah, so that, that was the main concept to, to make this contrast, and uh, and it resonated very well with uh, with us first, and and then the first players who saw the game. It's it's uh, it's very special, yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, you know, talking about those characters, uh, I think uh, you sent us some some footage of how these characters came to life, right? And we're going to show that in a bit. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can talk a little bit about how you actually, you know, took pictures of these animals and kind of created <laughs> these yeah. these characters from from nothing, basically. That will be that will be very interesting. Yeah, so the, the first test footages for the characters was just some uh, stock images we, we uh, uh, meshed up with, with our own bodies, the photos of our own bodies costumes. And, uh, and it was silly and, and funny, but, but nothing uh, too professional. So we thought that we need to go to the zoos and the wildlife parks uh, ourselves to make, make our own photos of, of the animals and, uh, and also mm, mm, Natasha, the, the fan fatale of uh, the story of the game, is, uh, is a professional model, so, so we have to, to find our characters very, very specific uh, ways, and, but yeah, it's an indie game, so majority of the characters are <laughs> so, us in, in silly costumes and, and with animal hats. But uh, yeah, we, we have a very, very, very uh, talented and professional graphic artist who, who in, in my silly concept, made this totally unique and professional uh, and, and uh, product. They did an amazing job. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. they look lifelike. It's, it's wild. Yeah. Uh, when you say. Uh, when you say Natasha is a professional model, do you mean Natasha the woman or Natasha the cat? Oh, both. Oh, both. Okay. Actually, yeah, actually the, the, the cat who portrayed, uh, portrayed uh, Natasha uh, is a cat named Ursa, and uh, he's a very big celebrity in the cat world. So uh, he has uh, like 10,000 followers on Instagram. Oh, so okay. I need to yeah, yeah, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> That's we spend more yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I love cats. Awesome, that and is great. she's amazingly beautiful. Yeah, it's a very special cat. Very, yeah. very unique looking. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Great job on that for sure. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, also, also. Hmm? Yeah, and also the human model was a, was a very, very talented professional model. So yes. uh, he would be the only, the only, the 
on the professional model as well as uh, other uh, than, uh, yeah, we work with uh, the majority of the current. Yeah, so, so. I mean, obviously, you know, the body language is just as important as, as mm -hmm. especially, especially, I, I believe, especially when the, um, when the face is an animal face, you you have to work even more through body language, right? Because uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. it's yeah. it's difficult for humans to. A chicken can't smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yeah, you made that joke as well. Yeah, they got a beak, they can't smle There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So body language is is even more important, probably. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Cool, and um, yeah, similar concept um, or a similar thing happened with uh, with the all the um, environments. Um, as you said earlier, uh, Clawville is not a real place. Obviously, it's a fictional. It's take. It takes place in a fictional world. Um, um, yeah, that's. I'm assuming the process is somewhat similar, but also different. Obviously, because you know, it's. Uh, th there's more more to to it as well. Uh, I think all the, the narrative driven games uh, are. are Need, need to have a, a very specific and, and uh, uh, deep, deep world. So uh, the game, the first first game was uh, uh, created for a graphic novel actually, and then for a real novel, and then uh, came uh, to be a video game. So uh, the world of the game was already built. So it has its own history, culture, okay. uh, social issues, racial issues. So all, all these these things uh, were already built when we started to uh, work on the actual story of the game and the game itself. So yeah, I think it's a, we think it's a, it's a very very important part for this type of game where you you have to introduce a, a whole new world to the player. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I can already, or you know, both of us actually, we've already, you know, since we're testing the game here at, uh, at Handy Games, we've already played through it uh, a couple of times, and um, it, there's a lot of background lore to it. It's, you know, obviously you have your case that uh, the chicken police is trying to solve, but there's, you, you realize that a lot of thought went to, into every scene and every character, and everybody has a history, and... Um, some of it you can uncover as you play through the game, and that's like that's very interesting to me. Um, I really enjoy these these kinds of uh, hidden lore, you could yeah. say. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's in these in these games. It's, yeah. really, it's really lovely. Yeah. I think that's what's what makes a, a game even more interesting if it has a lot of lore behind it. It's just not what you see on the surface directly, but there's so much more behind it and... Yeah. And, it, and it makes characters believable, even yeah. if they're chickens, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, it's, oh, okay, so these two guys, they have a history, they've had their, you know, yeah. fair share of troubles in their lives, and that makes them believable as characters, even though, you know, they're as fantastical as you as they could be because they're, yeah. they're chickens so yeah. but um but it works it works that way and that's that's really that's really awesome yeah. what i also yeah. like is that um in this whole universe it there's they have the same issues we have in this world like this well, like this racial injustice and all those yeah they have the same yeah. issues but it just yeah, like, the whole world uh, of chicken police is a metaphor uh, for our, our world, but uh, yeah, it, it has its own valuing issues because of the animals and because of the uh, predator versus prey uh, kind of thing. But yeah, in the core, it's it's almost like our world because so many perils, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that makes it even more relatable, I think. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apart from that, though, um, you know, why, why chickens? There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many animals that's, out there. That's the most common question we got. I yeah, I can uh, imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange matter. Uh, actually, there is a there is a video on YouTube. Uh, you can watch right now uh, called Chicken Boys, uh, which is a very, very old video. It 
two real chickens in the backyard who's uh, fighting with uh, some rabbits and, and uh, they're actually like, like some, some very, very witty calves who just uh, uh, fight the crap out of uh, the two bunnies. And I saw that, you know, and I was like, what, what, that's, that's so, so strange and, and, and uh, weird. I have to make, make something out of it. So I always wanted to do some story with animals because I, I very much really like this, this kind of uh, anthropomorphic uh, animal uh, stuff. And, and also I'm, I'm a big, huge fan of the 40s and one movies of the uh, American noirs and the Nation one movies. So basically these two things just uh, fuse together and, and uh, that's how, how Chicken Police uh, won. In the first, first, yeah. That's really yeah. interesting. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that is great. Um, another thing that I thought of earlier, um, the the environments, the individual scenes that you visit throughout the game, right? They're, they are three-dimensional scenes, actually, right? And then they're transformed to be two-dimensional? How does that work exactly? Yeah, I've, I saw it in the video. That's, um, yeah, we saw it in the video as well. It's, uh, yeah. Why, why go the extra mile, right, when you could just come up with a 2D environment? Um, yeah, when, when we started to work on the environment first, uh, it was 2D. It was, um, it was, I think the first concept was actually photos, or, or yeah. made from photos, like the, the characters. But then we realized that we couldn't get a different angle of all the objects. So we can't really, can't really make a scene out of just photos because we would be so, uh, you know, yeah, constrained. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we wanted a view of the environment, we decided that uh, we do uh, 3D. But because we also wanted to make the game very light, so it runs on mobile and uh, mm -hmm. any other uh, platform. We, yeah, it's microwave, <laughs> so, so we decided that, and because we don't have to move around in the scene, just move yeah. around, yeah. so we decided that we'll uh, pay back all the 3D geometry onto very, very low poly geometry, so it's like 2.5D, it's basically like movie sets, so it's right. only built from one, one angle, and if you move, next to it you see behind the wall. But uh, in the end it really worked out. I mean, yeah. I mean it took a few months to I think there are locations that we did three or four times from scratch. But uh, we we now have a really good workflow finally so we are happy with the Yeah it really works out with the individual I guess the individual two D parts of the setting and then you know, those kind of move as you look around the scene that gives this impression of depth that really works very well, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, awesome. What I'm interested mm. in, in knowing is what's, what's your favorite part of developing the game? Is it the first couple of steps where you just come up with ideas, brainstorming, or is it the actual part where you put all the pieces together and then see it all coming to life in, in form of code? And what's your favorite part of developing the game so far? Well, <laughs> I, have, I have a few. Uh, the first scene that, that gets together, first time, you have to look around, it's quite nice. To see. That was the first thing that came to life. Um, that that pretty nice. It was Sony's office. We we used that for the pre-production production. Mm -hmm. um, the first one we didn't make it in the game. We we were we were we had been rewrote all parts of it. But uh, yeah, that that was the best. And also the second one one was. Uh, when we get the first batch of the voice awards, because yeah. that raised that all, all, these, 
Mid mid magnitude. So um, that that was the best. Yeah, yeah I, I think for me me as well. And uh, the first one is is this uh, brainstorming section, which is very very um, intriguing at the time. But uh, when when I first saw the the first professional footage of some uh, after my my horrible one is I put together in uh, Photoshop. So when I first saw the real Sunny, it was it was mind blowing experience. And and yeah, the second one I think uh, the, the voice voice is when when I first uh, hear Sonny's uh, first lines. Ooh, it was it was a it was a, a very very tear jerking <laughs> experience. Actually, when I heard Natasha's first dialogue with Sony, yeah, uh, that was like wow, this game is really cool. So uh, I became a fan but because until then I just copied all the parts. I was so deep in my my stuff that I didn't have. The look of the game. I didn't have didn't have the chance to try it and, and play it through. But the first time uh, I saw the battle with Natasha and uh, Sony, that yeah, yeah, the the voice that, acting. That's the very bad part of the game for me. Yeah, yeah, still, the, yeah, the voice acting is really uh, it's cr it's crazy good. That just ties it all yeah, together. Yeah. It makes such a huge difference to have this mm -hmm. really good voice acting in this game. It, yeah. It's amazing. I also remember uh, the first time we we got to play the game with the voice acting. Mm -hmm. We were mind blown as well. Yeah. It was just perf perfect casting, really. Yeah. It couldn't have been better. Yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, the, the casting was 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 mind blowing for us as well because uh, we. Did the voiceover with OM Studios and, and uh, they were awesome. And Mark is the, uh, who was our, our voice director, uh, did the casting for us, um, majority of the casting. And, and uh, yeah, it was, we were mind blown as well when we first hear the uh, actresses who wanted to play Natasha and Sonny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The casting process was. Super fun as well. We had a lot of options to pick from, so mm -hmm. that, it was quite nice. Yeah. Wow, this is the best for boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Low key, my favorite voice uh, voice performance is uh, the the characters' names is uh, Phyllis and Roy's. They're oh, the the, the hedgehog. Yeah. Mm, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't I don't know if are are the are they in the demo actually. Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay, well, well, there you go. Actually, the first scene of the demo. So, so yeah, just try out the demo. There you have it. Go, go and try out the demo, and um, yeah. yeah. My <laughs> my favorite great. is Lance, the bar the barkeeper. He's hilarious. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Oh, he's also great. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They're all great. Yeah, actually, all great. Uh, the guy with the, with the voice for the barkeeper is also Martin. Martin oh, but, uh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. That's good. Very talented. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's two different kind of yeah. style. Completely different everything. characters, yeah. But it works. Yeah. it works. It's great. Wow. Awesome. That is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess um, one more question that you know we've pre-discussed, and you sent us another uh, sort of clip is, where did you draw the inspiration? You know, other games, movies, obviously, you know, the whole film noir um, thing. Um, that would be that would be interesting to know. Yeah, uh, it's a always uh, bad uh, to mention a few. Um, as as a film noir side. Uh, I, I really, really like the, the classical 40s film noir, so like the Big Sleep, uh, Gilda, Double Indemnity, and also some neo noirs like Chinatown or Blade Runner, something like that. And uh, in the game side, it's also very noirish, <laughs> of course, so, so Griffin and Louis is my very, 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 very uh, 
the best game I ever played. It is very good. It is very good. I just, I just love it. We are imagination. And, but also, there are other, other very important games like Snatcher and Bully Snots, uh, two early, super early Kojima uh, games I very, very like, and they help shape the, the gameplay itself. Um, also, Alien Noir, it's a very, very obvious uh, choice for inspiration. But to mention a not so large uh, game as well, uh, Bioshock is a, is a super important inspiration for, for me as well as I don't know the guys, but yeah, for, for the, the world building, the lower and the world building, uh, it's, it's uh, the original Thief series and Bioshock. It's the two, two main inspirations. Is it, is it more that, that kind of almost dystopian feel of the game? Is that where that comes from? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because uh, the whole of itself is a, is a very dystopian mm -hmm. uh, city with uh, the it's, it's been like a new utopia that yeah. became uh, the opposite, uh, of course, <laughs> because it's a noir. Yeah, and uh, also I was in, inspired, uh, inspired by. Uh, some some anime stuff like George Orwell's Animal Farm or Hayao Miyazaki's uh, Ogre or so. It's one of my favorite uh, uh, films of all time. Or like uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox is is, is also a uh, less and less classic. And and uh, of course, but uh, the game was already in development when uh, Bojack Horseman uh, aired the first time. But but yeah. That was a it was a super uh, good feedback that we are in the good way to, to, to make something like that. So so yeah, that was a super good feedback too. Yeah, yeah. this is a great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That way, so, you know that there is an audience that would even be interested in that sort of yes. style. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, absolutely. And uh, the game, you know, without spoiling anything, but. Um, there's a there's a few hints and nods to your inspirations. I feel like in the game that uh, some of yeah, them yeah, picked up. Now that you've yeah. told us, you know what your inspiration was. I'm like I've I've heard that before. I've seen mm -hmm. that before. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I tried cool. to hide uh, maybe a hundred Easter eggs uh, from games, from movies, from uh, anywhere I, I get uh, my inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, that was the goal. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, again, we've um, we've talked about how you kind of went through um, the different stages of the art style. Um, why did you choose this super realistic kind of kind of theme in the end? Why, yeah, why that? It was a it was a very strange choice, and uh, and it just came like like we hit uh, with a lightning. So, so I just uh, tried, tried, tried this uh, photo mashup thing, this photo manipulation thing, and, and it just uh, resonated super well with the, the, the world it was in my head already. So uh, I already um, wrote some uh, pages for a graphic novel and then a short animation. So the world of Chicken Boys, the world of the wilderness was already in my head pretty strongly, but I don't know how to express that, and uh, and that's why we, we tried uh, different techniques and, and different uh, kind of interpretations. But when when this the first uh, image as uh, detected by the real rooster head uh, in in the place of said uh, a main, I I I just. No, that this is what we need. This is uh, the way we we can express that that uh, contrasty, uh, weird but serious, uh, absurd but but uh, really work we really, really, really. yeah. yeah. I, I think I think we want to the, the movie experience, so it looks like a movie, and uh, also from one side. The, the characters seem easier to produce this way, so they are like actors with animal heads, but obviously it made the environments harder to produce, so they match. Uh, 
but but uh, that's why when we had this group, that's when the, the voice acting came in, like, okay, to make it really feel like a proper one would be, we need four voiceovers. So that's when the decision came that that will be the next step, and that uh, brought it to a one level. So I think, yeah, it, it was a process, and uh, and we really like it. So yes. We are really happy with it. And with the, that's true. I, I, I think it really came together very, very well. Yeah. Um, when I, you know, I've obviously only seen a few glimpses of these older art styles, the pixel art and the cartoonish version and all that. Um, but some, as someone who likes a good, you know, mystery movie or crime movie or, or book even, uh, I feel like this this art style that you went for in the end is a lot more approachable because it's a lot, I take it a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Of course, you could tell the same story uh, in a pixel art style, but it's it is not the same. Yeah. So, yeah. So I feel like I feel like that was a very good choice. Yeah. yeah I, I think it would be a lot harder to get the whole atmosphere across. Yes. In in just pixel like bigger pixels. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think yeah, you did the right choice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, once you once you hear them, uh, you can engage that in that second. So yes, seeing yeah. a chicken head on top of a human body is is, is creepy as hell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> once they talk, once they talk to each other, and yeah, yeah, I I think mm -hmm. this this is a game you need to play. Yeah, it's, it sounds like. You can play the demo for three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, uh, one year ago in uh, Gamescom, uh, everyone sat down and, and uh, put on their headphones. It was just like, like uh, pulled, pulled in this world immediately as, as uh, the, the sound, the music. The yeah. voice of work came together. So yeah, if you just saw a picture of chicken police with this, this uh, creepy weird stuff, mm -hmm. it's a little bit uh, hard, hard to sell. Hard, hard to sell, yeah. And also the, the black and white aesthetic of the game is also a very risky move, was a very risky move mm -hmm. to make, but uh, we think that was the good choice yes. uh, for, for this game. Because because of the film aesthetic, uh, obviously, but also I think for for this uh, contrast I, I mentioned earlier, uh, to make it more serious than it looks uh, at first glance, we have to do black and white. So it definitely it's fits. Anyway, so. Yeah, it definitely fits. It fits with the whole, you know. I mean, again, the 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 world is fictitious. It's not you know set in a real it's not a real setting, but it is, you know, um, it takes inspiration from, you know, the sort of 1940s, 50s uh, area. Um, you know, you, you see that um, in the trailer when you play the demo already, you know, the sort of technology they use and all that kind of stuff. The cars you know, they drive and all that. Exactly, the cars and all that and the fashion the as well. <laughs> uh, the music, also, by the way, amazing music. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Um, so so and and that I think really fits this film noir theme and the and the whole black and white um, design choice. I think that's uh, that really works uh, well together. Um, yeah, the music. I mean, I regularly get the the Natasha song stuck in my head. Yeah. It's just a beautiful song. It's, really. It is really good. Yeah, it is really good. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a totally unique song. We we wrote for the game, so all the lyrics, all the music. So yeah, that's that's a, have, have a very very good place in our hearts. I think that that uh, Natasha song. It was a it was a big milestone for her whole project. That we can imagine. It was a yeah. yeah. It was a very memorable. Is it? Thing. Is it the? Is it Natasha's voice actress who sang the song, or is it somebody else? No, no, it, it was somebody else. When we did the song, we we didn't have have Natasha's. Okay. Uh, also, we didn't know that uh, uh, the game will be lost at that point. Okay. So, 
The, the first concept was just to voice uh, Sony's narration uh, as like the uh, classic film noir movies when you heard this uh, detective narration. But, but uh, on, I think uh, when we have our first uh, exhibition, um, we have, have very, um, very much uh, feedback on that we need to do the voice because uh, just the picture um, didn't didn't make the characters uh, believable uh, enough, and uh, and this whole animal thing more creepy. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So so yeah yeah as as you said actually uh, we needed to do the voices to feel the characters as as real people as real human uh, people. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a very, very big step for the, for the project. Yeah. And we decided to do the full voice over because it has uh, more than eight hours uh, of, of voice titles. So it's a super big uh, thing to do. Uh, big RPG games, uh, RPG games uh, used to do this kind of uh, voice over mm -hmm. amount. So, uh, it is yeah. very interesting. It was a super big thing and a super risky thing also. But uh, first, when we hear the first uh, footage of the characters, yeah. we so Yeah, as you said earlier, the, the second you start uh, hearing them talk, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm in it. It's, I'm sold. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, no it's that now. easy. Yeah, it's that easy. It really works. It really works well. It's it's weird. It's only weird for for a few seconds when you start up the game for yeah. the first time, and but you're immediately in it when when they start speaking. It's, yeah, it's great. Magic. It is. It is kind of magic. Yeah, it is almost that sort of movie magic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It's really cool. It's also, you know, obviously the theme being very mature. Um, this is kind of a weird uh, comparison, but it sort of takes you back to um, this childlike feeling of when you when you see like a kids show with you know with animals as the main characters, and you're like, oh, you know, the kids are all over it, and they're yeah, super into it. It's all it's kind of like that, but for you know, for grown ups, I guess, for adults. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I, I think. We are all big kids in this in, in this yeah. uh, company. So in this industry. <laughs> in this industry as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so we made the game for ourselves <laughs> a little. Of course. I think this is the best, the best approach to make the game for yourself. Yes. Make something that you would enjoy. Yes. Make something yeah. and play. Yeah. And then if you have enough passion then it, it should work. Well, yes, I think our company, that is our main uh, goal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we all agree on that, this, that we, we should make games that, that, are, that meet our needs, our expectations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's art at its core, I guess. Um, all, video games are an, a form of art, I would say. Yeah. And yeah, um, so. obviously with video games, uh, it's it's a bit... You know, you can't just make art for art's sake in in this uh, industry yeah. because you know there's always it, there's so many expenses that go into it. Like you know, I mean, how are you going to get eight hours worth of professional uh, voiceovers? You know, that's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but still, it is it is a form of art at the end of the day, and um, yeah. and the most important thing about art is that. The artists or the artists themselves, um, you know, are really behind their project. And it's, you know, mm -hmm. that's why yeah. that's why so many, yeah, smaller projects are are so much more authentic. I would say, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, yeah, actually, we never wanted to make an artistic game. Uh, it just came to be yeah. in this in this other art. So we just want to make a good game, uh, and especially, especially that that we never saw it. Uh, and yeah, the the art side is a is a very strange topic, so I, I don't, don't want to go there. But yeah, I think we achieved some something like uh, 
you could call video game art or art stick video game, but uh, that that was not the goal in the first place. We just want to make a great game, special game, and I think we managed to do that. But yeah, I think so too. I yeah, think so I too, agree. for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, the story itself. You know, even if it even if it were you know uh, if if it were a movie and just regular uh, actors playing the characters, it would still be a very good story, a very interesting, unique story. Yeah. So even even then, you know, take away all the other special stuff, it's still special. So you know, oh. really really well done from my end. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Awesome. Um, well, I think um, you know if there's anything more you want to tell us about yourselves uh, about the game. Feel free. I think the best you could tell that the play the demo, play the free demo yes. because that's that speaks that speaks for itself. That speaks yeah. anything. Yeah, so definitely. I I agree. Playing the demo will tell you so much more about the game and what it feels like than we could ever explain. It does. Yeah. It doesn't work Absolutely. that way. Yeah. 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 You have to feel it. It sounds cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you really like, have to experience it, yeah. The genre, you really have to play. I mean, uh, the, the screenshot or trailers doesn't do justice, really, because you have to engage in yes. the game to understand what is it about and uh, understand the whole concept of it. Mm -hmm. And the atmosphere, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think also the length of the demo is it's good, so by the end you, you know if you like it or not. Yes. Not, I think not so. wasting too much time. For, for <laughs> it's, not a, it's definitely not a waste of time, no, no. no for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can only recommend myself. Uh, go, go over to Steam, check out the demo. Yeah. It, is, it is the way to go. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time. Um, Thank you. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow with some more chicken police. Um, mm -hmm. We've got some fun things planned, you know, not to, not giving anything away, but uh, stay tuned. There's more coming. And um, yeah, thank you everybody for being here. We'll have a short break and then up next will be Endling. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that thank for you. a bit. And, uh, thank you guys. Thank Take you. care. Bye. See you soon. Play the demo! Play the demo on Steam! Demo. Right now! <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys. Take Thanks. care. Bye. <laughs>